The set extensions and environment work was extensive, but for a host of unusual reasons. Firstly, the show was set in America, but shot in Canada, with the story mainly playing out in New York, San Francisco, and the mountainous Cannon City. Secondly, it was set in 1962, which means removing many of the traces of modern day life, but it's an America that lost World War II, an America divided by two global superpowers of the show, Germany and Japan. And finally, if that wasn't hard enough as it was, for fairly obvious reasons, many locations that were scouted for the show simply didn't want to have their offices or buildings covered in Nazi SWAT stickers. Similarly, some of the Canadian Chinese communities didn't want to embrace the imperial Japanese look from the production's art department. In fact, the more the production got into it, the more key visual effects became. Even some simple problems, such as finding period cars or planes or trains, needed to be rethought as 1960s cars would not have actually developed and been designed to look the way they did had America lost Washington to an A-bomb and never had a post-war boom, instead suffering occupation and defeat. The amount of hidden visual effects in episodic television is growing dramatically as companies such as Zoic allow stories as twisted as The Man in the High Castle to be realised on an episodic budget and allow us to see the world of author Philip K. Dick from someone as talented and as amazing as executive producer Ridley Scott.